Hello my lovely English learners and welcome back to my channel Lingualana. In this lesson we are going to talk about The Last of Us, that's a new series from HBO that currently is on the top 9 out of 10. We will discuss different idioms and interesting phrases from the first episode. So if you haven't seen this series yet, be careful, spoilers are here. And try to start, don't forget to subscribe and switch on all notifications in order not to miss the next lessons. So, if you're ready, let's get straight into it. As far as you know, this series based on the video game The Last of Us. By the way, did you play? I played a little bit about few hours. I like it, yeah. And uh, now I'm trying to find similarities between the series and the video game. Of course, I did. I found some of them. As for English in the series, the English is uh, the language is very interesting, and I found a lot of idioms, phrases from spoken American English. And what is more interesting to um, listen carefully how natives how the uh, actors pronounce uh, different words and i realize why non-native speakers don't understand native speakers americans for example because non-native speakers do not pronounce themselves some words correctly so that's why i didn't don't understand native speakers so in this lesson i will tell you about interesting phrases in my humble opinion uh, from spoken language from spoken american english i will tell the uh, examples and i will give you the explanation so let's watch the first phrase. Epidemiologist, I presume the prospect of a viral pandemic keeps you up at night as well. No. What is interesting here, that's the phrasal verb to keep up at night. So that's almost a literal explanation here when something bothers you at night and you can't sleep because of that. For example, um, the examination keeps you up at night because you know that tomorrow you're having your test and you are thinking about it and you can't sleep and you may say using the phrasal verb keep up at night let's proceed uh, just to be clear you you do think microorganisms pose a threat what is interesting in this part microorganisms pose a threat I just want you to pay attention to this collocation word plus subject pose a threat, meaning when something is uh, dangerous, could be dangerous, yeah? And you cannot say put a threat or do a threat or make a threat. Better to say pose a threat. Let's proceed. Oh, in the most dire terms. Here, this sentence, in the most dire terms i like the word dire and dire means very dark very bad very hazardous terms that's one of the synonyms you may use it okay let's proceed to the next one it comes from ergot a fungus in the first few minutes of this episode there are lots of terms from biology and from chemistry but what is interesting for you as uh, English learners it comes from ergo so there is a phrase when you want to know the origin of something uh, you may say what does it come from that's not only about where you come from where do you come from I'm from India for example so that's also about some items that you want to know the history of that, the origin, kind of, it comes from something. And in this example, it comes from ergot. Ergot, that's fungus, one kind of fungus. So let's go on. It begins to devour its host from within. Next sentence, what is interesting here? So it begins to devour its host from within, and etc. etc. So the interesting word here is devour. If you haven't seen this before, if you haven't heard this word before, I will explain you, I will give you some synonyms. For example, raven, or to gobble up, that's a phrasal verb, to eat hungrily. 
We can use this word devour when we talk about some parasites or about animals or in this case, in this example, when we talk about some fungus, some ergot. So now let's go on and here is the conversation between Joel, a father, and his daughter. So I like the way how she speaks. I like her voice and I like her language very much. And sometimes it's difficult, it's hard to get what she's talking about because uh, she doesn't speak, for example, like me, like splitting words for better understanding because that's the lesson and that's why I'm talking like in a splitting manner. She's a very good example to practice American spoken English. Of course, a lot of native speakers speak like this girl. So let's watch. You know, I don't really like pancakes. I know you don't like them. It's for my benefit. You hear? You know, you know I don't watch my benefit. <laughs> yeah, of course. Um, why again? Why native? Why non-native speakers don't understand native speakers? Because sometimes they split the sentences, but native speakers never do. So there are many words in one sentence, but it sounds like one very long word. I know you don't like them, it was for my benefit. That's it. <laughs> I tried to simulate. <laughs> so uh, what is interesting here, it was for my benefit. So here it means that he doesn't like pancakes, her father, and uh, she wants to make them, but he doesn't like it. And that's his birthday, by the way. Uh, she wants to make these pancakes because she likes them. And instead of saying, I like them, I like pancakes, she said it was for my benefit. That's one of the options to say that I like, for example, porridge, and I do it for myself, that was for my benefit. Let's go further. The next scene is full of jokes, and we'll talk about one of that. Listen. How old are you again? 36. Afterward, I presume. Here, pay attention to the word gonna. That I'm going to, that's spoken American English slang, gonna have to wear diapers. Soon, diapers, I hope you know this word. That's, you know, trousers for babies. And here she is talking about his age. He's 36 today. Gonna have to wear diapers soon. Mm, that's a good joke if you like it. Drop in the comments your opinion. Is there enough for Uncle Tommy? Next one. He's asking Joel, is there enough for Uncle Tommy? Means food. Because his brother, her Uncle Tommy, has just came into the room, into the house or into the kitchen. And they are having their breakfast. And he's asking, is there enough for Uncle Tommy? And her answer. In the water bag. Well, there would be. Been. This phrase is hard to get, to understand, of course, she's chewing and speaking at the same time. But what is more interesting here would have been, what does it mean? She didn't have more scrambled eggs for her uncle Tommy and her father asked her about that. So she said that there would have been. So that's too late. There is nothing left for Tommy. Sorry. Let's go next. Those are the pancakes. The next phrase from Uncle Tommy. I thought we was having pancakes. What is interesting here? Do you see it? Do you understand? We was, not we were, as it's supposed to be according to English grammar, plural form here, we were, but no, of course, that's the spoken English, that's American spoken English. It's okay, kind of, to make mistakes and to say we were having pancakes. Also, pay attention to the ending of the word having. He didn't say having, yeah, we don't, uh, we don't hear this g in the end, of course, that's silent. 
having, having. We was having pancakes. Okay, let's proceed. We'll pick you something up on the road. The next sentence will pick you something up on the road. Something, pay attention to G again in the end. What does this mean? It means that uh, poor Uncle Tommy didn't eat anything and his brother Joel supposes to grab some food to buy something on the go. They are going to their work and he suggests to buy some food on the road on the go. We'll pick you something up on the road. Work a double. Here this phrase, we could work a double. Double shift. So that's a shortened phrase. Instead of double shift in spoken English, it's okay to say just a double. Jakarta. Where is that? Middle East? It doesn't ring a bell. It's definitely a country. Doesn't ring a bell. That's an idiom. Very good one. You may use it. Yeah. Meaning it doesn't say anything. They were talking about geography and she said that's the capital of Indonesia. And I suppose that they don't know where this country located. So that's why he said doesn't ring a bell. I think that this was a joke partially, but maybe they really in this series don't know where the country Indonesia located. The next part of this episode shows us that the disaster happened and we don't know exactly what happened, kind of virus caused by fungus or ergots or something like that. We see people and um, we see here military zone, quarantine zone and different people who work hard here and uh, they don't get money for their work, they just get some cards and this scene is about these cards. Listen attentively. You're short five. You're short five. So they have a deal with this military guy and the military guy is supposed to give him five more cards for some stuff. I don't know, for their deals. Yeah, and he said you're short five. It means that there should be five more cards from you. You are short five. Hey, do yourself a favor. Here is the next phrase. Do yourself a favor. Stay off the streets for the next few nights. I'm interested in the phrase do yourself a favor. Here it means that this military guy takes care of Joel. Please be careful of course something could happen. Do yourself a favor. Be safe. Boss has got us working doubles. Guys are jumpy and tired. Here, this sentence, guys are jumpy and tired. I am sure, I'm 100% sure that you know the word tired. But what about jumpy? That's not about they jump all the time, all the night. Jumpy meaning restless or irritating. Of course, they work a lot. They are military guys. They are soldiers, kind of. And so, of course, and you do some... And due to some factors, today they're jumpy. That's why this military guy asks Joel to do yourself a favor. He's trying to he's trying to take care of him. Now we just shake it off. Here, the conversation between Joe and his friend or his girlfriend, so we don't know still for sure. I guess he's his girlfriend or maybe wife. Tess, she said, now we just shake it off. That's the phrasal warp to shake off, meaning that they have to think away. That's the synonym. Get something out of one's head. They try to get some stuff and money. Of course, they are going to escape from this quarantine zone and something went wrong. And now she's trying to calm him down and saying, shake it off to think away to get something out of one's head. So you march out of here all clean eastward. So you march out of here all clean eastward. Pay attention to the word out of. That's again American spoken English, out of here. And what about all clean eastward? 
uh, you know this actor Clint Eastwood and you remember his some um, uh, movies and films he always like a hero and he's hitting everyone he's um, he's jumping he's trying to be the the best uh, he's trying to be the hero he's the hero and he's trying to be the hero sometimes and uh, like he's very sharp and uh, she's coming Joel down not to be like Clint Eastwood in his movies. But he's going to get wind of it and skip. In the second part of the sentence, we see an idiom to get wind of something. To get wind of something means to find out about something. That's an idiom. It's just the synonym to get wind of something, to find out to know more about something. So better than decent chance making it to Tommy in one of those. Here, the next sentence, again, the conversation between Joe and his friend Tess. So better than decent chance making it to Tommy in one of those. Here we are interested in this compound noun, better than decent chance. What does decent mean? Worthy, well deserved. And why here we see this compound noun? Of course, in English grammar, it's okay to make compound verbs, compound adverbs, and as well compound adjectives and of course compound nouns, so that the sentence is clear and understandable. So that's why here we see few hyphens and the compound noun better than decent chance. So that's all for today. If you like this lesson, please don't forget to like this video and drop your comments. Of course, we haven't covered all the phrases in the first episode. Of course, it lasts about one and a half an hour. But uh, if you like it, please let me know in the comments and uh, when the next episode will be ready. I will make a longer lesson for you. Thank you for watching this video up to the very end. Don't forget to subscribe and see you on the next lessons. Bye-bye.